Welcome in LSU fans. This is the Go 24-7 podcast. My name is Bryce Kuhn alongside Glenn West, and it's bye week. A little uh, quiet, I guess we could say, in terms of the sprint that the first five weeks of the season have been. But we're back and better than ever as we get ready for Glenn, what is probably, and I'm sure we'll have a lot of this conversation next week, the most impactful, one of the most important, if not the most important game to date in the Brian Kelly tenure, Ole Miss coming to town next week. Um, we'll talk about that next week, but obviously Brian Kelly spoke with the media last night. I know that you put up a piece. We've got the video out on our YouTube channel that you can check out as well, the press conference. Maybe some of the overarching takeaways. I know it's kind of mum on injuries front, but just your takeaways from Brian Kelly's bi week presser. Yeah, I mean, this is a uh, this is a work week for LSU. You know, those that are hoping that are are wanting to see LSU kind of take that recovery week. I think they're going to work all that stuff in and have that um, be a, a part of what they're doing this week. But they they want to get to work. They understand that they are going into a absolute dogfight here over the next two months of their SEC schedule. Every single game from here on out is an SEC opponent, and uh, as we've seen here the first couple weeks, the the SEC is. Uh, very much up in the air in terms of yeah. parity across the conference, in terms of the kinds of close games that we've seen. I mean, you just look at the Alabama-Georgia game. You look at uh, Georgia-Kentucky, um, you know, kentucky Old Miss. I mean, like there's just, there's just so much uh, kind of up in the air right now, I think, about where this thing can go in the conference. And you know, I think LSU has some tenants here to – really make some noise. And I think they see an opportunity. I think that the, uh, that they, they want to get some good work in this week. So they, they practice on Tuesday. They're going to practice again, I believe on Wednesday, they'll have a couple more uh, kind of you know sessions in terms of development and, and meetings and things of that nature um, before to kind of really turning the page to their Ole Miss prep. They might be working in some of that already. Uh, I would imagine they've they've done some basic installs on kind of what they want to do with Ole Miss this uh, mm-hmm. for for next week. But um, you know, I think they're also going to be uh, very much incorporating kind of the 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 recovery aspect of this towards the weekend. And I think the guys will have you know a couple days to to really allow their bodies to recover uh, after these first five weeks. So um, it's. Uh, it's going to be important for LSU to kind of um, you know get off to this hot start in SEC play, obviously, but um, to also do so over the next week with the right mindset and and kind yeah. of the right frame of what you want to accomplish um, while staying healthy. Because I mean, I think that's the biggest thing for me is just don't have any inger- lingering issues that pop up over the next week or two in practice. You you want to have all your big bullets uh, going into that game and. Um, you know, one of the kind of revelations that came out from Brian Kelly's press conference on on uh, Tuesday evening was you know, C.J. Daniels seems to be dealing with a little bit of a knee issue. You know, they don't seem overly concerned with it, um, but he ha- he is a guy that has had a knee problem in the past. He had an ACL injury, um, and there were some concerns initially uh, about that, but all the tests came back clean, and they think he's going to be okay. Um but certainly you don't want any scares like that, you know, yeah. when you're when you're in the middle of your bye week. So um, making sure he's healthy, making sure you can get Caden Durham on the field. Um, you know, Zy Alexander, maybe at cornerback would be great to get back into the rotation. I know we've been talking about it now for three weeks, but Chris Hilton would love to see Chris Hilton you know, get a couple of get a couple of targets in that game against Ole Miss and kind of get his feet wet uh, in this offense. So mm-hmm. uh, there, there's a lot of things I think LSU can do uh, next week when the, in terms of getting guys back and getting guys healthy and kind of the effect that that could have on the game. Glenn, I wanted to ask you this because I talked about this in the uh, live post-game reaction show uh, after South Alabama. <clears throat> Defensively, uh, we kind of saw what this group could look like with, um, I don't want to say new faces, but necessarily you don't have Harold Perkins in the fold. And, and what does that do for this team? Wanted to kind of get your thoughts on what you thought about Major Burns in that star position. Whit Weeks, who I thought was an animal at, at that spot. I mean, just all over the place. And then Greg Penn, who I know it's South Alabama, but he even looked a little bit more comfortable kind of in his spot too. Wanted to get your thoughts on that because that feels like something that you can take from that game and you hope to build upon when you play Ole Miss next Saturday. Yeah, I mean, you just mentioned those three players. They were the three guys that led the team in tackles. You know, Penn with fourteen, Wicks with uh, Wit with nine, and and Burns with I believe it was eight. So, um, you know, those guys were all over the field on 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 Saturday and and did a really nice job. I thought 
you know, you really what I wanted to see was kind of what configuration LSU would go with. You know, Brian Kelly had talked about, you know, maybe them doing the three linebacker thing where they would have a you know a third linebacker out there, whether it was West Weeks or Xavier Atkins, who they mm-hmm. activated for this game, or or whether they would go back to the star deal. And I think my opinion and kind of I think most in the that cover the team's opinion was that they were going to go back to to Burns at the star, which is what they did. And um Look, I mean, I, I think you're going to have some some good and some bad with that. I mean, I, I do like what Greg Penn and Whit Weeks did um, for the most part. They they were very gap sound in the run game. They did a really nice job um, of kind of you know seeing the field and 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 you know making you know physical tackles, getting guys to the ground, um, you know not taking bad angles and allowing some explosive plays to occur um, against the South Alabama offense that we talked about was was one that had put up a lot of yards and a lot of points against the teams mm-hmm. they had played to that point in the season. So to shut them down the way that they did, you know, I know you gave up the one touchdown drive there, I believe, to start the third quarter. Um, but outside of that, I thought they were really good at getting off the field. I thought they had some opportunities to make plays. They had nine tackles for loss you know, as a front seven. Um, you know, I think that 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 can't be lost in translation here either. I thought the defensive line, you know, held its own and did a really really nice job in this game. Um, and that's going to be something that LSU needs to lean into defensively because I think the more the more that I look at it, and I'm not sure if you're the same way, but I think LSU defensively has to lean into their strengths, which has so far been creating havoc in the backfield and getting yeah. you know a really uh, consistent pass rush on these quarterbacks. So you, you face Jackson Dart next week. That that's going to be a great litmus test to see if you can get some pressure on him and you know force him to make some throws maybe a little earlier than he wants to. But um, you know I, I think that the the way that this front seven is played and really developed over the first five weeks has to be really encouraging for all LSU fans that are watching these games. And to your point, I mean, I went back and watched uh, the L- or the South, the excuse me, the Kentucky Ole Miss game, and what Kentucky was able to do create some chaos for Jackson Dart. And then this week, I mean, Glenn, you and I watched the game. I was there in person just a few weeks ago. Ole Miss has got to go on the road to Columbia. We know what they have up front, so a lot of good tape for Kevin Peoples, Bo Davis to kind of look at. And obviously, you know, this entire defensive staff is saying, okay, what's working in these two games? And the best part about it, if you're an LSU fan and Maybe uh, the good news is you get this bye week while well, Ole Miss has got to go on the road in what is a hostile environment against a really good pass rush, and they've got to try to do it again. And so it's going to be very interesting, and that'll be a game I know a lot of LSU fans are going to be tuned in to Saturday to kind of see what Ole Miss looks like. Yeah, I mean, I think we when we first got a hold of the schedule, I guess maybe last year or whatever it was, I can't even remember when the schedule came out, but um, – when we first got a handle on kind of who was going to be playing when, and uh, you, you saw here that LSU was going to be coming off a bye week against an Ole Miss team that we all thought was going to be you know, very good, and uh, Ole Miss was going to be on its seventh game in seven weeks. And I think that you could immediately pencil in a little bit of an advantage there for LSU uh, in terms of just you know being well-rested for that game, having the extra week to prepare for just that team. Um you know, I, I think that 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 can go a, a certain way. I, I don't know yeah. that it's the, the end all be all in terms of who's going to win and all that stuff. But uh, I think LSU can go in with with some confidence and some momentum here that they uh, momentum that they've built over the last month. Uh, that they're they're on the right track in a lot of different areas, and I think that they have some um, s- some some questions that are still going to be you know kind of tested here in this Ole Miss game because you haven't quite faced the elite caliber of team that you know is going to be competing for a playoff spot uh since the usc game and uh i think you know this will be a next the next big exam i think i put that in one of my stories this week is that you know they this is going to be a a really big test for lsu on both sides of the ball can the offensive line continue to take steps forward in the run game with these backs can uh can you get you know caden durham healthy and, and available for this for this game, because I do think he's going to be he's going to need to be a big part of what they do uh, against this Ole Miss front. Um, you know that that the defensive line in particular that's very heralded and has you know a lot of uh, you know, NFL potential future draft picks on it. So uh, how they have how they protect us, I think that uh, will be the biggest test that they face so far as an offensive line and pass protection. I think 
Uh, there's there's going to be a lot of a lot of storylines that we can dive into next week, of course. But uh, I do like the the fact here that LSU is going to get this extra week to prepare for Ole Miss, and uh, you know, like we like you just mentioned, the South Carolina game is not going to be an easy uh, feat for for Ole Miss to get past either. And you know, they could very well come in a little bit beaten up and bruised, and um, that would be a a little slight advantage, I think, in LSU's favor in that respect. It's going to be a night game next Saturday night, and I saw a uh, a tweet from – I think it was someone on the beat, had, and I can't remember who it was, but they said it's going to be a crisp fall night um, on October the 12th when the LSU and Ole Miss suit up. So you talk about college football, you talk about football weather. If we get like one of those – like they, they said it was going to be like 68 degrees. We know the weather can change so much here in South Louisiana. If we get like a 70-degree game in October, Glenn, that's going to be like peak football when we talk about what you could see in – the weather was great last weekend as well. Wanted to get touch on this real quick before we kind of move away and kind of maybe into some more stuff of the bye week. But Garrett Nussmeyer, um, you know, the, the, the decision that he made, obviously the two decisions and those interceptions. Wanted to get your thoughts. Do you put it more of, hey, the game's in hand and this is being nitpicky. He's trying to see what he can get away with. Or is this more of, hey, we need you dialed in. And maybe that's why Brian Kelly obviously had that interaction with you've got to be dialed in 24-7 regardless of the opponent, regardless of the score. What, what were your thoughts on those? And just maybe is it living – you live and die with that type of stuff from Nussmeyer or your thoughts maybe heading out of the bye week into better competition? Yeah, I think you, you – I think you have – I think you're on to something there with the, your point there about living and dying with what that is for Nussmeyer. Like I think there is a, an element of that in his game that you know, you're just going to have to live with. And I think for LSU's case, you just hope that they come in situations where you're – or when you're got the game put away or when you got, you know, and, and not high leverage situations in the SEC. Cause you know, look, mm-hmm. mistakes happen and you know, Nuss Myers in his first year as a starter here, he's uh, learning, learning this game very quickly and the kind of the college speed and it's going to go up another level here when they take on Ole Miss next week. Yeah. So, um, you know, look, I, I, I think you know, the, 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 the kind of the conversation around that second interception and kind of Brian Kelly's reaction to it is taken on a life of its own. And yeah. I don't know that I, I think that it's probably been way overblown. I think it was a, a coach getting into a player that he knows that he has a good relationship with and can trust and that, you know, he won't lose him for, for getting in his grill a little bit. And, and Nussmeyer after the game, you know, just credit to him said, I want to be coached like that. I, I, I made the mistake. I, I want to, learn what I did wrong and um, get that instant feedback. And certainly I think he, he can learn from all the mistakes that he makes here in these first five weeks. And um, you know, I, I, but I, I also think that he's probably been the biggest reason that LSU sits here at four and one um, and, and, and it's having an offense that is consistently moving the ball down the field like this one has. I mean, th- this offense is, I think been very good. It hasn't been yeah. last year's offense. I don't think anybody thought it would be last year's offense, but I think it's more than held its own and proving that it can move the ball up and down the field consistently. Uh, it's for me, it's just going to be about can they continue to find ways to hit on explosive plays, um, which they've done a little bit more of over the last couple weeks. Uh, and then two, can they find something in the run game that they can consistently go to, uh, especially in the red zone when that field shortens? Um, you know, I still have a little bit of a little bit of queasiness. I guess it would be the right way to mm-hmm. put it that you know that they can consistently find ways to get into the end zone against these elite caliber teams. We just we it's been very inconsistent in the two games that you know LSU has kind of been you know, matched in terms of physicalness against yeah. South Carolina and USC. So uh, we got to wait and see kind of how this offense can continue to move forward uh, and find ways to punch those things in for six, as opposed to settling for three or turning the ball over on downs or, you know, any kind of uh, you know mistakes that are made down in that red zone. So um, I guess it's, I, I kind of went off on a tangent there about, you know, the offense, uh, <laughs> but I think it all kind of weaves back into the fact that, um, you know, Nussmeyer is going to be the guy operating this thing. And I think he um, can learn from those mistakes. And, and I think he certainly has the, the talent and the, and the mindset to kind of move on quickly and, 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 you know, be better about it in the future in terms of being more careful with the ball in those situations. Yeah, I think, uh, look, social media helped this thing take a life of its own, like you said, and in the post game, Look, Gary Nussmeyer, son of a coach, he's been around the game. He understands what this is. Um, and for a guy to say, hey, that's the way I want to be coached. And I'll say this too, you look across the college football, the elite coaches, even in games that are in hand, 
treat you know players like that because one they have the relationship where they can do that um it's just a standard and that's what brian kelly has been trying to establish here and i think garrett nussmeyer is a perfect example of saying yep that's my bad you know that's that's a that's hand up i know what i did and i want to be coached like that i like how he did that and not just said hey it was my bad but also validated the way that that interaction kind of happened uh, Glenn, all right, you mentioned Nussmeyer being a guy that is big reason that LSU is 4-1, and one. so I wanted to kind of turn that on its head here. Who's a guy coming out of this bye week that could be primed to pop off, in your opinion, or someone that you're just going to be watching for that maybe LSU needs to get going for them to make a nice run? I mean, you mentioned this SEC is wide open. Next Saturday in Death Valley is going to be a statement opportunity for LSU to say, hey, remember us. I know we lost that week one game. We can still still be a force, not just in a playoff race, but maybe an SEC race as well. Yeah, I think we could probably take one offensive player, one defensive player each. And I, I think for me, the one guy I'd love to see kind of get going a little bit more is, is C.J. Daniels. And, yeah. and it's not from a fact that he hasn't been effective so far. He's been very consistent. He's catching everything that's thrown his way. Um, it's just they haven't hit on the deep balls yet with him. And I think mm-hmm. that's kind of the element to his game that LSU brought him in uh, in part to try to explore and and try to get some more out of. And I think that there is some, um, some untapped potential there in terms of what they can uh, expect from him and, and, and how he can continue to move this offense forward from a vertical passing game perspective. Uh, so he would be my one on offense. Um, defensively, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of racking my brain here because there's just so much, I think, up in the <laughs> air with this defense right now in terms of personnel and who they could use. Um, I think, you know, look, the, one of the big things that I've taken away from the last couple of Brian Kelly's press conferences has been about the safety position. Um, mm. and kind of how they're going to start tightening those rotations here against Ole Miss. Um, so I think I'll probably go with Deshaun Spears on defense. I, I Dang, think you took mine. I, I took him. All right, my bad. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I took him. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I just I, I love the way that he's kind of carried himself so far. We got a chance mm-hmm. to talk to him last week, and he's not a guy that's going to say a whole lot, but he's also just kind of learning the game and – kind of finding his footing and uh, BK talked about him on Tuesday saying that he's, you know, he's still learning some things, but that you can see the talent when it's there and and they know that he has the talent. And I I think that he's going to only continue to get better as the season goes along. And um, you know, I, I I just, I think that what all, what, with what else they have in that safety room, him being a consistent force for them and being a starter um, going forward, I think is probably the move that LSU makes here. I don't know who they pair with them. I think it probably could be Sage Ryan. It could be Jordan Gilbert. I think those are kind of the three, um, the first three that, that come to mind in terms of uh, what that rotation looks like at safety. But they had been rotating five or six guys back there. And I think that they're going to cut that uh, potentially in half. So uh, Gilbert, Ryan Spears are going to be my three uh, in terms of guessing what that two deep looks like um, for next week. And, and Deshaun Spears would be my pick on, on defense, but, but what about you? Yeah, man, you took mine. So I got to go down the pecking order here. You know, I, I I'm going to stay in the secondary because Glenn, I, I said on the radio the other day, I've been very impressed. One of the biggest questions up front for me was could the coaching uh, help mitigate the gap that I thought there was in terms of just raw talent. And they have, I mean, Kevin people's higher of the off season. I mean, regardless of what happens the rest of the year, this guy has been phenomenal. Uh, Bo Davis, we're seeing in real time, you know, a guy like JVR Suggs, the highest graded defensive lineman per PFF. I mean, this guy uh, was a D two player last year and we saw Glenn in fall camp, like Suggs didn't get a ton of reps early in fall camp. And, and now he's kind of matured. And if you know, Mod bro, and we've, you know, talked with him and he talked, said some great stuff. Dominic McKinley, if those guys continue to progress, that's going to be good. But I'm going to stay in the secondary. You know, we, we've talked about this cornerback position. Zy Alexander, uh, we'd love to be able to pencil him in, obviously. You know, next Saturday, I don't know what re- how realistic that is. But you know you have Ashton Stamps on one side. I don't think anyone expects Stamps to become a lockdown, you know, Revis Island type of corner out there. But if they can find an option opposite of him, and so I'm going to go with another freshman, P.J. Woodland. If Woodland takes the steps, and you know, much like what you what you said with Spears, I imagine through the first five weeks of the season, both guys have had to play a decent amount. Their heads are spinning. They're relying a lot on athletic ability, what they know about the game of football. This week provides a refresher. Things get to slow down a little bit. Now they get to watch the five weeks' worth of film and say, okay, here's where I can correct things. 
So kind of talking about if Spears and Woodland, I'm not talking about becoming all SEC type players, but if they can become more consistent, you know, not too high, not too low, I think that pays major dividends for for this defense. So I, yeah. I, I'm going to go with uh, P.J. Woodland there. You could also talk about J.K. Johnson. Uh, we'd love to obviously see Zy Alexander be able to come back and play because I think that's probably your highest floor in terms of the, at that position. I would, I would, I would probably say, yeah, I would probably say Zai would have been my my second pick if I hadn't gone with Spears. Like, I, I just, I think that um, what he can do at cornerback for a six foot three, he's long, yeah. he's lengthy. I think so much of this um, is going to be about trying to get him healthy in that back half of the defense and and having him rotate in with with Spears and with Stamps. I think those are kind of the top three that I think LSU mm -hmm. has settled on when they're healthy. Um, but you know, look, I, I, I just, I, I really like what he has the potential to do. I think you saw in limited snaps against South Carolina uh, what kind of impact he can have you know, with the interception there in the end zone. He didn't really give up. I can't remember. I don't think he gave up a ton of big plays in that game. But, no. um, you know, I, I, I just – I think that he's – and, look, the other thing here that, you know, I didn't really – I wrote about and I have, we haven't really touched on here, but I, I would imagine that there's going to be some um, – some 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 feelings of revenge for the secondary after what happened oh, to them yeah. last year in Oxford um, to to kind of come out and and stake their claim that you know they they're better than what they showed last year and Alexander was a part of that um, mm -hmm. you know, Stance was a part of that Toviano was a part of that um, uh, Sage Ryan of course was a part of that um, there's Major Burns was was in that number as well like I, I just I think that there's a number of guys on this defense that were here last year. Um, in that secondary that are going to have something to prove next week. And mm -hmm. we'll see uh, kind of what that is and what it looks like. Um, but um, I think, you know, what we've seen so far, they're around the ball. Like they're closer yeah. to the ball. They're, they are tighter in coverage than they were last year. They are not 10, 15 yards off the ball and kind of off their man and trying to not give up the big play downfield. They're, they're very much, they're very, they're, they're a lot more physical this year. They're, in these and you know they're doing their they're doing their best and i think that there's uh some reason for optimism next next week that this group can be uh at least at least better than they were last year because i mean they, you can't get much worse than that game was last year for them and i think that there's yeah. going to be uh, a lot of guys out there with some 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 strong feelings of i'm going to show you something next week that, that that's kind of my thought no i like that i like that um, i'll flip it over to offense real quick before we round this out Mine's more of a position group, the, the offensive line. This offensive line, we know how good they've been in the past. If they really kick things up a notch, once again, you know, you get the bye week, kind of look at some things in the run game, and we have seen it be dynamic with Caden Durham back there. But, you know, with the question about Caden Durham and his health and, and what that could mean going into the Ole Miss game, if this – I mean, it's almost a challenge. It's, it's an honest on this offensive line to be able to say, okay – if Caleb Jackson, Josh Williams, whoever we throw back there, Jawan Johnson, uh, Caden Durham, if those guys are going to have success, it has to start with us. And I know that we've talked a lot about it. Brian Kelly's mentioned things. But at the end of the day, Ole Miss is better than South Alabama and UCLA. Ole Miss, you know, uh, Texas A&M, I think, is better than those teams. Uh, you could make an argument. Obviously, Alabama's in that category. Oklahoma has a really, really good defense for everything that they don't have an offense, a really good defense. You're going to face about four really good defenses left on the schedule that could all shut you down if this offensive line does not play up to its caliber in the run game and have that balanced attack, that a complimentary football that Brian Kelly wants to see specifically on the offensive side. So that's kind of my take right there, Glenn. Uh, on the offensive side, it's more of a group. If they really take off, and I like what you said about C.J. Daniels, yeah, this offense can be a top 15, top 10 unit in, in the country pretty easily uh, with what they're able to do. But it's been fun. It's been a fun first five weeks. And uh you know, look, for everything the fans were frustrated about after that week one loss to USC, you kind of step back and look at it, Glenn. You're hoping that the middle portion, the back half of the schedule before you get into that bye week, obviously before Alabama, is that you can prove that week one, that was a fluke. That, that thing, that's the biggest thing you want to prove is week one, we just didn't execute plays when we needed to. And now you come out of it saying, okay, this is a different team. You want this team to evolve. And that's what Brian Kelly, I think, is hoping for think as well. I think everything changes if you win this game next week. Like in it terms is. of my, in terms of the perception of this team, where they can go, what they can do. Um, 
you know, Ole Miss is legit. Like they're a legit contender. And, regardless of what happened against Kentucky. Yeah, regardless of what happened last week. They have some really talented players on both sides of the ball. And if LSU can go out there and 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 kind of win this game and prove to the fan base, prove to itself that it can compete against the best of the best in the conference, I think the sky's the limit for this team going forward. I agree. I agree. Recruiting weekend, obviously, it'll be uh, kind of a slate of in-state um, OVs uh, along with a, an out-of-state member. If you want all the latest information, head over to Go 24-7. Sonny Ship wrote up a like, great little piece that kind of outlines what that looks like. We'll have interviews, hopefully, from the weekend. Obviously, you got to shout out because we're getting close to fall ball there, Glenn. Uh, Jay Johnson says, hey, I know football's going on, but we're going to keep recruiting three commits in the last five days. We got an interview up with one. Uh, we'll hopefully be getting some more out. As more well. on the way, too. Uh, more per- on the way. More yeah. on the way. More yeah, throw up the, the tiger signal because it's uh it's yeah. it's more more on That's the way. Enough. But it's a lot of fun. LSU, come hang out with us over at Go 24-7. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you for watching and listening all season long. Leave us a five-star review on Spotify and Apple Podcast as well. He is Glenn West. My name is Bryce Kuhn, and we'll catch you next time here on the Go 24-7 podcast.